is insanely strong at the moment. Yesterday, Vichy Gaming, I believe, played it too with the... Um, I believe it was them. But Storm overall is Ooh. just feeling really, I really strong. His feeling strong? 25% win rate does not, not look good. great. <laughs> it, it doesn't look great, but trust me. I think it'll um, change. It looks a little difficult for him, though, I would say, this game. Like, it's not that easy to pick off an ET right away or a mm. Grimstroke. They both, like, Grimstroke tends to get one item, usually, that can help him out. Uh, he doesn't have a mana battery on his team. There's no one that helps sustain his mana pool. Yep. He has pretty weak initiation overall uh, as his allies, like Omni Knight as a core, Jug as a core. You're relying on either the, the Golem, which you don't want to initiate yep. with, or the Tusk, which is like kind of a mediocre mid-range no, initiation. Has no burst damage that follows his like, initiation up. He's going to have to use so much mana to initiate, yep. and then no one has any to sustain him. That's true. It, it, I agree with you. They did last pick the Storm. It isn't looking like the easiest Storm game. There's Phantom's Embrace as well, which is really obnoxious to deal with if it does latch on to you. And now a carry for forward gaming. Something like a Raid King still remains. Yeah. The Ooh, wow. nice call, another, Just another yeah. stun, right? Just feels good. Yeah, just an easy hero. You don't really care about these big ulties as well with him. Is really good with the Grimstroke. You have that stun. You have the Inkswell setup. Yeah, I'm liking Forward Gaming's uh, draft a lot at the moment. A little bit better than PSG LGDs. So I think this last break thing, just like the panel was mentioning, yeah, they wanted some extra lockdown to be able to control this storm. He's also now going to be another... They have multiple ways of initiation, right? It's like your Bat Rider sometimes doesn't always want to be able to do it. Your ET can give you vision. Now ET or now uh, Wraith King and Bat Rider can jump in at like the same time if the Wraith King does end up going for one of those items later on down the road. And for gaming, they've, they've definitely got those yeah, real comfort picks. The CC and CTA. Uh, even like Snake King getting, getting the bat this game, even though LGD did ban out quite a few of his, few of his hero pool, he still gets the bat. And the yeah. bat, it, it, it's one of his best. Yeah, it was, a, it, it was a neat way they set it up too, right? They banned that Legion Commander in the, uh, like the third, fourth to be able to set up for Snake King to get it. And yeah, I mean, bat, bat's always great. Bat's definitely one of those heroes that's up on the rise. And he's amplified. He's got, a, he's got an ET, so that aura, once it starts getting online, will definitely... Definitely make a difference. Looking at these lanes. Looks like just, just straight straight 2 one twos. We see uh, Pylai die. He's going to be the one playing that ET. See the item build. Starting with the Sentry Ward, I think it's actually super important now on ETs to do that because you're all about stacking the camps. So if they do block the camp, you have to be able to unblock it to make your hero powerful. Now you're better, though, at level 1. Now he has you know, plus 40 damage if you hit the two heroes to get that extra plus 5 as some action. Uh, Tony, a bit of, bit of punches here with the tag team. And yeah, bounty runes are just going to be two for two. I'm curious about the, how this mid matchup is going to go. Because it's, uh, it can be some trades. TA overall, you get like more denies, obviously. Like, okay, Surely you, you expect the TA to do a little better in, yeah. the, in, the, in the laning aspect of it. Yeah. Obviously the, well, I guess the Storm's going to have the jungle, but the TA is also going to have the Ancients down the road. So The one concern is that there's a Tusk. I think that's the big yeah. difference, because you could see level 3, there's going to be a pull, there's going to be a level of the Vortex, or level 4, a level of the Vortex, and they're going to make a rotation with the Tusk to kill this TA. You have to imagine it's going to happen when they pick that, because it, it just it can be very easy and very natural for you to do so, to get on top of that hero early. On top lane, already a bit of aggression here from Arme and X Nova with the Bonds and Blade Fury. A lot of damage coming out onto Pi there. CX Nova has a Sentry Ward of himself. We'll be make sh making sure to just walk over and follow Pi just to keep tabs of where he's awarding so he does know that that Sentry Ward is placed inside the camp there. He has his own. And Hard Camp will be at least able to spawn, so Pi's probably happy about that. Yeah, I mean, the side lanes definitely s sort of from a, a glance look like they're, they're going to be lanes where PSG are going to be feeling pretty safe, right? Mm -hmm. You know, this top lane, Arme's going to have the Blade Fury anytime he feels under threat. I mean, he's getting a lot of stacks on here. Uh, 10 stacks and all. Goes for the quick TP back to the, the tier 1 tower in the Ooh. south. X Nova gets the cheeky pull up there. Gets the uh, hard camp pull through that one tank. Oh, all the way straight cut. up towards the yeah, tower, yeah. He got it, the perfect one. That's really nice by X Nova there. That's going to give Ame a, a good amount of secured farm. We see bottom. The, the scary thing is. This Wraith King plus Grimstroke lane, it has a lot of kill threat, right? Sure. You have such low But it, it, is the Omni sort of not enough to, to sort of rely on being able to save yourself and, and if FY? He's, if he's alone, I think he can definitely die because there's just so much chase that can come out. These low cooldown stuns and low cooldown slows that come out from both the Grimstroke as well as that Wraith King. We see the manipulation of the wave start. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. FY is like, there's no... It's too risky. Yeah. We're double melee versus a Grimstroke. It's, it's tough. When you have Snowball, sure, you can play around a little more, but he's level one. Farm-wise at the moment, 
up top. Parmay's farm certainly getting limited by Pi and Snaking. They're slowing down his early early CS here. Pi getting the punches in. We see maybe is doing great in that mid matchup as expected. You know, in the first few waves, he has used his entire mana pool to secure a lot of those last hits, though. Oh, and MSS actually getting the kill onto FY. I mean, there's the lead up you said. These two heroes, they do have kill potential. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the best. This is one of the better kill lanes, right? Wraith King plus Grim and Jug plus Grim are probably the like two best kill lanes right now there are with the combo, that is. As we see, maybe he's going to pick himself up an arcade rune. That's going to be helpful for that mid lane too, just to keep himself mana so he keeps spamming those remnants to get the last hits. Because we are seeing CCNC starting to get the levels, of course. Higher levels of refraction make it harder for that Storm Spirit to get those secured last hits. On top, snaking. Some pressure. Farming the lane too. Yeah, keeping keeping on par with the CS that Arme's getting. Yeah, he's even getting the... We usually see the two points in Sticky before the two points in Firefly. He's opting for the two points in Firefly. Just push the wave in. Now, mid lane, we are going to see FY start to head over. This is the move. You said that... What level yeah, is he now? This level is what you got to look right? towards. Yep, has the level of pull. This has, is where they're going to try to set it up. Has the arcane rune going as well. Mm-hmm. So FY, if he sees an opportunity, if CCNC steps forward too far, the wraparound will come in. CCNC keeping himself on the high ground, though, holding... Holding the dire creeps by the tower to make and sure that he doesn't go too far out. He sees FY under the ward yeah. the whole time, so it's very thankful that they do have that one. They have to expect that. I mean, they're playing versus FY Tusk. You know he's going to make aggressive moves on the mid lane around, you know, usually around that night time in particular. So they may, they put that ward down early on. And FY Bottom. Chalice is getting gone on. Let's see if they can get him again at the same time up top. Snake King should be fine. He's got the long duration of the Firefly and he's deep, but indeed it's the bottom lane with Chalice. And now mid. He'll get away. Let's see if they can get CCC. They roll forward. There's going to be the backup, though. Pi in with a beautiful stomp. It's going to be enough to save CCNC and keep that TA safe. Nice movement from Pi. As now, they will turn towards him, maybe. Getting a bit of damage down onto the UT, but he's able to walk it off. TD rune claimed by MSS there. It's very nice. Checking these runes. You know Storm has a bottle, so I think checking runes becomes more and more important. That's also why you saw Pi rotate. That's why he moves over, lane. yeah. yeah check runes is... Just super important right now. So next 30 seconds, we've got those bounties. Same thing. Go check those runes so this bottle, uh, this storm spirit can't fill up the bottle again. Maybe he might just go shrine and then just farm some jungle camps anyway, though. So now Chalice is level four, feeling a little bit better about himself down here alone, and they're just having FY run around the, the map and try to set up for some kills. And they could, they could look for snaking here. He has the firefly available. He's very far up on this top lane, FY. Gotta give him some harass. Should be just fine. Yeah, must have been nothing more than that. In fact, what well, FY? He's going to take a bit of aggression from Snaking. A Snaking starts to head back towards him. Armes by FY's side, though. We'll put our Snaking going for anything more. Three bounties for forward. So really making sure that they get those those runes, as I was mentioning before, for versus that Storm yeah, Spirit. An incredibly close start. Yeah. I mean, I mean a lot of, like, pretty much even CS even. on the mid lane. Uh, elsewhere across the map, no one's really falling massively behind. So Snaking is, is about a wave behind, but other than that, Everybody getting a look in, in this game. Ooh, maybe just ate a couple side blades there. Has to actually back up to use that shrine. So you can see we'll start to pull slightly ahead there. And we'll now hit level six too. So those traps will come out. See the maybe scouts out Pylai died running through the jungle there. They might expect that there's a the, ward yeah. somewhere around here now. Bottom, Chalice. So if they've got the damage to do so. Stroke of Fates out. We'll be able to get himself away with that boosted regen. Yeah, status resist really coming into play there. That little bit of extra slow that they have in this lane just doesn't actually have enough to go for that kill there as FY. Now getting kind of... I mean, he gets the room, but they'll certainly try and chase him down a bit. Somnus is watching from the high ground. He's going to zip forward, maybe see if they can try and turn things around. He gets the Vortex grab back onto Snaking. Tag team's there as well. Snaking being focused by the two of them. The stomp comes out, but it doesn't matter. Snaking's already dead. Pi will try and bring down FY with him. CCSC's coming over to join the fight as well. FY's going to be fine. Shadow Word heal from X Nova will allow him to get himself away. Pops a salve as well. Pi. He's even ready to go back in. Pi, he tried to chase this. He has MSS and CCSC with him, but it doesn't matter. Four gaming lose two in the river. Ever. Ooh, looks like there was maybe some slight miscommunication there. CCNC just immediately backed off as soon as he went to the high ground. Pi committed. That was yeah, a little bit of uh, giving up his life there for no reason. As they will pick up that kill. I still maybe. got that arcane rune going, so spells are ready to pop. I have got the ink swell onto Snake him. Into the snowball he goes, dodges the stun FY, keeps the distance. Snake he's going to try and chase though. The stroke of fate doing quite a bit to FY, but the healing ward's out from Arme. 
It'll be okay next Nova Ops for the safe play. TP back to the tower. That doesn't even TP to base either. So he's still in the area to be able to stay up here for this lane as they want to go for safe I mean, again. FY. No Firefly. He's straight back in. Another tag team. He carried it up. He had the mana for him. But the rest of the Arcane Rune was enough to get the cooldown back online once more. And it gets them the kill on Snay. Snay's down. It's LGD being quick with the plays. Yeah, FY getting a lot done, causing a lot of chaos. That's Pi. He's got some hefty punches. Still has to respect. I think that Arme could turn, and Arme, level 5, closing in on the 6. Great already. Like, you can see why they picked the Tusk in the first two. That's they saw a lot the done. stroke, they saw the ET. All their spells are very telegraphed to be able to dodge as a Tusk, just being able to snowball and pull people or protect yourself. Overall, FY already dodging quite a few of those there. Yeah, pretty much where, wherever FY is on the map at forward gaming, they can't really get kills. Yeah. And FY is even going for a build that allows him to stay on the map. He's gone for Tranquil Boots. He picks up a Clarity off of the Courier too. So he's looking to just keep that momentum, keep that pressure on the map for his team. And yeah, it's, it's still very close though, like you're mentioning. It's at just 1k. Now, farm's still very good for you while down bottom. He's yeah. getting pretty much uh, the, the solo lane as well. So he's about a level ahead of Arme's Jug. So you are going to see this good Midas timing. Same for the, uh, looking at the two mids, CC and C still with a slight edge. We'll expect to see someone start to catch up with the usage of the neutral camps. Chalice is getting a lot. I mean, he has 44 last hits down bottom here. That is very significant in comparison. You look at the Batrider, only has 1,900 net worth. There's 2,700 net worth Omni Knight, who's level, almost level 7 already in the game. That is very significant. Just that little bit of extra sustain can look to turn the fights pretty, pretty handedly. And, he already has two points in the Heavenly Grace too, which, like we said, it's going to be very useful in a lot of these situations versus like the Bat Rider, just to remove any of these type of disables that uh, Forward does have to protect his Storm Spirit. As maybe with an Invis, wants to get aggressive. Oh, let's see if we can find a bit of a free kill. I mean, bottom the Wraith King is a you know, bit of a tough target. They, they tier one backup this. should come in as soon as maybe reveals himself onto your wire if he does go for this. Forward already knows this is happening. They drew the line. They saw this coming out uh, with the rewards. He's got a skill point saved as well, your wire, so can opt for the reincarnate. Yeah. If he feels there is turnaround potential, if he does get jumped, so maybe already spending quite a bit of time on this. He's going to go for it. Zips in. You are. He'll put the skill point into the reincarnate. The TPs are coming in. They're ready to try and you know, go for a bit of a turnaround and they'll turn towards Chalice. Maybe he's still got a little bit of mana left to play with and will managed to force Shawar back, but see if they can get more out of this PSG LGC. They've managed to force out their reincarnate usage. See so if they can get the tier one tower as well. FY wrapping around behind. He's on top of Pi. Vortex drag back from maybe is there. Extra TPs are coming in. So over across Pi tries to get the stomp up, but he's already dead. They've lost the Elder Titan. Now CCNC trying to punish FY for the dive. They've got the slows here. One more right click from Snaking will do it. They'll get the trade. So think anything more out of this, maybe? He wants the rune. He really does. He wants to try and hold on for the 10-minute rune, but now the silence into the stun. They're on top of him. He hasn't got a huge amount of mana to play with. Great Fire Blast connects. They They've him. got the chain stun. Snaking was there with the lasso follow up, and maybe he's dead. Ooh, the wow. greed hurting him there as he hung around. Felt that he could maybe challenge forward for that bounty rune. It cost him his life. MSS kind of like played him a little bit there, right? He inkswelled, ran on long him, and then maybe he's just like, okay, I can maybe play around this and just bam. zip away, and then bam, the Phantom comes the Phantom. out. So Smart play from he MSS. He should have probably expected it because of how the level that the Grimstroke is already, right? You're level five, you're expecting there's a level of Phantom Brace coming out there. So it does catch him off guard, though, and forward. They react heavily with literally their entire lineup. They bring five heroes bottom, but they get themselves that big kill. Ame gets a ton of space out of it, though, up top, finishing up the Yasha, as well as mid. X Nova was farming the whole time as that Warlock, getting those levels. So See some traits. Yes. Now there's no Wraith King ulti, there's no Bat Rider ulti, there's yeah, I think this bottom tower is LGDs for the taking. I think yeah, now forward gaming, let it go. Yeah. I leave that bottom tier one to, to drop to the push of LGD. It's too much of a risk to go for the place when you don't have your ultis available and you know that they're gonna double down to go for that tower. But they're still just farming. I mean, look at this. Exnova is still just sitting in mid. Ame is very safe up top because he's a juggernaut that used lasso. There's no way they're gonna be able to set up for a kill on him. So they're splitting themselves around the map. FY is the only one kind of showing himself into the face of Forward's jungle. But... Okay. All right, they're actually bringing Snaking down. He's got an Arcane Rune. No Lasso available okay. yet. And the tower is incredibly low. And there's a Warlock rotating down too this for LGD. This could be a risky tower to try and fight around, but Forward are going to try it. They're coming in with extra TPs as well. There's the Soulbind onto Chalice and Somnus. They'll see if they can get on top of him. Snaking has Lasso in two nice seconds. Knockback. The Silence for the Phantom and Embrace. The Chaotic Offering and the Snowball Across will be there. FY trying to do his best to save maybe, and they've allowed oh. them to turn around. They're taking out oh both Snaking and Wire. Now MSS, CCNC. This was not the defense that Forward had to go for. 
It was always going to be a risk. The tier one tower was falling. That seems like a textbook mistake to make, Fog, trying to hold onto that tower. Totally agree. They had already, they'd expended so much already, right? They don't have their Wraith King ulti either. They, they try to go for that fight. You have to expect the Warlock's going to rotate down there to just throw the Golem. And hey, that's exactly what happened. X Nova just comes down and does 3,000 damage with a Fatal Bond's chaotic offering. You cannot make those moves against LGD. No, and that's five heroes that they rotated down bottom on forward to make that move. And look at how big of a swing it is there. That's a 3k net worth swing because of it, because Ame just, he's like, oh. Good job, team. <laughs> so Great, Great job up. They don't Good need him. Down there. AC, indeed. This jug is going to be very, very big. We just see how you are. He's, he's got the Midas rocking, so we'll be able to keep on par with farm, but a little bit of map control is going to be lost. That, you know, then suddenly the, the jungle of forward gaming is going to be a lot easier for PSG LGD to move into and take what they want. Drums done on Chalice, so he really is ready to just run down heroes and it'd be a very sort of uh, annoying target to take down. And, a lot of speed, a lot of durability on this Omni Knight. Yeah, he's going to be able to just run into the front lines yeah. and just stay next to his Jug and his Storm Spirit quite freely because of this. Just heavily tanky. I mean, he's actually so tanky. 1400 before he even has the drum delivered. He's going to be sitting like 1500 plus HP. And we'll see. I mean, you're a fan of this one, aren't you? Maybe uh, level 10, so taking the, the overload damage over the mana regen. He always does. He yeah. does. Yeah. He's one of the smart ones. Mm -hmm. I think... I think there are situations, of course, where you can it for the mana region. I, I just, the damage is just, it's really nice, especially when you're playing with, like, when you have, like, Fatal Bonds. Like, any type of increased damage that you're, you're pumping out is nice, too. Most, most Storms go for, yeah. now we're seeing the 30 Overlord plus 400 health, most times, even though the static remnant damage is so appealing because you want to get it with 25. I was going to say, maybe, I feel like maybe he's, he's a static remnant kind of guy. He's not a 400 health guy, he? might be. He? he might be the we'll remnant see, damage yeah. this game, just because they could see, like, if we take it late, we can still just win this game no matter what. If we just take that type of talent too, it, the health is just the health is really useful though because if there is like to chain stunts, it's, it's I mean it is yeah, a lot. Four hundred, so it is a lot. Another arcane rune coming out for snaking, and he's not rushing the boots of travel this game. He's actually gonna go for the blink dagger early on. We've been seeing pretty much only boots of travels first. It seems like forward they want to have something to be able to force and catch the issue. Yeah, I mean I, like, I think you know you want for that instant jump for the storm. Yeah, I can, I can it, definitely understand. I think he had the blink lasso. Well, I think it's because of the soul bind. It allows him to soul bind, and then he blink lasso sure, two to targets. Get that yeah. combo. I think if he goes yeah. for the boots travel in this game, it'll be it'll just not it, let them be as aggressive as they can be with the Grimstroke. Yeah, it gives PSG team too much time to, yeah. to react. And uh, you know, talked about you know CCNC as well. We, we saw this on a few tiers more recently. You know, the, the decision to get the blink dagger before the death. So it certainly seems to be. Uh, more favorable now, and in, in a lot of games for the pro players. I mean, do you, do you sort of see why he would? get the blink rather than the deso first this time around CCNC? Like, do you need to be making plays, looking for looking for kills as a TA this game? Get into the back line. That's the thing I see. Get on top of the Warlock. Yeah. That's that's probably the big one for me, just so he can instantly follow up on top of the lasso as well. Yeah, so they've got there, yeah, the double blinks. Yeah. We'll see what sort of plays forward can make with these. We were seeing, like, even, like, what, yeah, to one tournament ago, two tournaments ago, no blinks, right? We were seeing dragon lances into desos yeah, no, and yeah, stuff, it, right? Yeah, it really has changed with yeah, the TA. It's, it's starting to change up again, back yeah. toward blink dagger. I think people are starting to... Well, I was going to say, because, yeah, back, what, back. many years ago, like, originally, was it always sort of blink before deso, or was sort of historically, would it still be deso before like, blink? On your TA back in the day? Kind of 50, I think it was mostly blink. It was kind of 50-50, but it was, yeah, it was a lot of blink daggers because people were just doing that thing where you just, you know, jump behind and you kill Yeah, because your physical burst was just, so, was just high. so high. Yeah. You really can find those support pickoffs, as you say, on the back lines with just a blink. LGD, they have everything available again. Chaotic offerings ready. They had all that downtime of farming, yeah, and they've back. got their ultis back up. So uh, forward did not make a move. They spot like Pi, and... I'll commit a little bit to it with Somnus. Zipping in, Pi. Oh, wow. He stopped to stop, but he's actually oh, just he's gone. Out. He's out. He's out of there. He was like, wait, if I don't stomp, they won't see me. Yeah, I mean, obviously, they don't have sort of the, the best methods of catching uh, and cancelling TPs. I guess you obviously a Vortex. They don't, you, know, you don't want to drop a Golem into the trees for a, for no, a Pylai die. Definitely not. So, yeah, he can he can get away with that. CCNC positioned oh. with the mouth. Hey, the got double the mouth. So, here we have it. Is it enough damage? He's got the Mansi. He's got the playthrough. He's trying to run away, but it doesn't matter. CCNC. He didn't even try to drop the healing ward. I guess he just felt like he was dead. The double melt strike. He did the eight armor into the minus another eight. That's, that's the pub play. Set AFK in a lane and go for melt. I, it, Someone's going to walk over you eventually. It was and a, they did. It was Arme. Great play, honestly. That was really well done there by CCNC and Snake. Oh, they will lose Pi. Finally does die. Maybe he's able to get over to their side of the map. And that's now he's going to look towards mid as well, potentially. MSS has shown. 
Maybe he's charging him down. In he goes with the zip. The ink squall upon MSS. He gets the silence out as well as the soul pine. Great spells here from MSS. He's going to survive. Now the Ray Fire Blast is out. They have the GA. Chaotic offering down onto the two of them as they'll instantly blow up Snaking. CCNC is trying to come into the fight. The refraction charges are being taken off though by FY. Another stun out onto the Tusk. FY still with half health. Good to go. The heals out from Chalice. He's keeping himself on top of CCNC, but the refraction is back up. Such high physical this early though. He just turns and kills the golem really early. But the tower will be claimed here by LGD. And getting themselves another objective. Keeping this lead 2k advantage at the moment, 10 to 4, 17 minutes for PSG LGD. Mm -hmm. The farm still racking up four forwards cores, though you are very close to having the relic. CCNC very close to having the full desolator done on top of that blink. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's an incredibly close game, and now it's going to be a timing where in about 15 seconds or so, this is where forward can absolutely look to go try to catch some stuff here. No golem, no GA. Yeah, they want to work with this timing. They're yeah. instantly grouping up around the tier two. We'll see what sort of movement they do head for. Go meet your carry up top, yeah. Go meet the, the Wraith King up toward that top lane, because he can provide another stun as well in lockdown to try to go for the Storm Spear in particular. But it looks like there he might just walk into Chalice here as he's clearing up that thing. He gets the Heavenly Grace off, though, first. He does. He's going to have that status resist. He's able to stand his ground, and he's still alive for now. They've got to back off. There's no yeah, you reaction. You can't go for it. Yeah, as soon, if he gets it off, as you said, before you get the jump, the lasso, it's useless. It's it lasts gone. no time, and look at his health, too. He was at 2,300 HP when he pops it on himself with all that extra 20 HP region on top of the 10 that he's, he already has. He's a so. tanky, tanky, man. Yeah, there's no way they kill him there if they try to commit. It will just probably turn into a disaster of rotations for them. As we do see, Xnova has gone for the Midas this game. He had some space just being able to farm that mid lane. I think he wants to be the one to get more farm, because Tusk, Tusk is a hero that... You know, you, you you can actually just get farmed just because of like you're getting kills and like that, but yeah, you're not really uh you're not really gonna get get to like this super scaling potential, even though FY does a lot of the time. And so. it's just super we've seen, you know, the power, you know, of course Lanham yeah. on his warlock gets this Midas and suddenly, you know, you look and suddenly he's got a refresher, suddenly he has an agonims, and then suddenly he's winning the game for you. Mm -hmm. It's that sort of that backup plan. You know, yeah. if, if it does get to the point where this game's at 50 minutes in, you, you're going to have to deal with a very scary warlock. He's a core. He yeah. becomes he becomes like the strongest hero in the game pretty he, much. He once wins he the game those. for you. Like we saw yesterday. Like I actually yeah. thought that perhaps they could turn and kill the golems with this Daedalus, whatever, Daedalus Lena or whatever it was, they, and they, they couldn't. couldn't. They, they, they could not kill the golems. They were just running at them because they just get way too strong when you get the levels. But we're so still a ways away from that. Sure, no, but it's definitely, it's, it's scary if you're forward. You have to start being like, all right, do we really want to... Yes, this game goes late, we're going to be in trouble. Yeah, it's like a back pocket thing that LGD will always have. They have these great cores that scale into the late game, but they will always have that as well, too. I think Radiance is now finished for Yawar, like you said, and the Desolator finished up for CCNC as you will approach that BKB. And Forward seems to be kind of content with just farming here themselves for the time being. I mean, they're so certainly keeping up with LGD. You know, this yeah. is sort of a matchup which... Oh. Oh, he's out of mana. That's, uh, Yawar won't, won't be able to chase. Has the Radiance done, though? Pre-20 minutes. They got a trap on him. The trap slow is on him. Maybe. He's in C. Is he, he's nowhere near. In fact, Maybe he's the one slow. that's in focus. As Chalice. Maybe. He's on top of CCNC. C. Maybe he's going Maybe down. He's they got the storm. They got him. Indeed, that trap, as you say, was enough to slow him down and get him in. They do use, lose Pilot Die to Armin. They will lose CCNC as well, as the Golem is committed. Very much worth to take that TA down. But forward, able to find something at the same time. Getting that kill on Maybe. Slowing down the Storm Spirit's game. Yeah, he just was walking up toward his shrine. His shrine was on cooldown, and there was just a trap there. The trap slow was enough for snaking to just push up with the firefly up onto that high ground there and get the catch. While that was happening down bottom, snaking, snaking swap, jump in, but FY very quick with the reaction. Still, they could have a shot of chasing him down. He has the tag team, but the silence is there, and we're snaking on top of them. The firefly, the sticky napalm stacks building up. Chalice does come in with the save though. FY still alive for now, and in fact, that's enough. Chalice keeping FY fine. Soulbind will be used to try and hold Chalice back from trying to go towards Snaking. Snaking now with the backup of Yawar as they'll charge in, looking for the Omni Knight. And there are, gets the Ray Fire Blast off. Xnova's there from the side, of course, has already used the Chaotic Offering, so it isn't there for this fight. Maybe with the big zip in, straight for the back lines. He's on top of MSS. The Grimstroke's gone. The GA's popped as they want to go for more LGD. The Snaking's been trapped up by the Ice Shards. FY's got his eyes on him, but the Firefly's back up. He'll get out of there. They'll now turn towards Yawar. They're doing a good job uh -oh. of bringing him down pretty low, but he has reincarnate. They've got to be careful. Maybe he does not want to continue to fight. He's low on the mana. Gets himself back up to the CCC's high ground. In. The CCNC, he wants to finish it. Goes for the healing ward first, but he's stunned oh, up. No. He jumped in. He tried to commit for maybe, but maybe was surrounded by the full team. That was a very risky play from CCNC and a play that 
had a very sort of low chance of working out. I mean, sure, the storm's low. He hasn't got a lot of mana, but there's four other heroes in front of you. That was that was a bit suicidal there by CCNC. I, I, I thought he... I was like, wait, does he have BKB or something? I was like, no way. He, he, he just blinked in. Yeah, that was quite crazy there. Coming the in definition from him. <laughs> of tunnel vision. Yeah. yeah. Guess he didn't see that. Like, he, they'd all actually gotten away. Like, Iwar and the rest of them had actually gotten out. Maybe he thought he could snipe maybe down really quickly, but... Oof, costly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I guess, yeah, because Yuwa still had the reincarnate. Could have maybe felt that he was going to go in, but I think, yeah, even if Yuwa does turn there, you're still dying as that TA. You, you get shredded by those, by the entire team of LGD. As Yuwa has now got the blink guard, so we'll be able to sort of to join CCNC in these suicidal plays. <laughs> so. They follow up, though. Now Every, it's, everyone now it's can multiple, jump in. Multiple well, forms of follow up for the Grimstroke, yeah. though. Right? The Soulbind, now they can get like multiple stuns. But yes. yeah, they have, to, they have to watch how they go into those aggressive plays because they're very tanky on LGD. You can't underrate like how much the Omni Knight can provide when he's around these heroes. He's got Solar Crest, he's got drums, and he's got his just natural skill load. And we do see him take the remnant damage this game. He yeah, just, I told he's you, going he for the late definitely game. that kind of play. Yeah. This is maybe. He's going for the... I mean, this he is the He sees damage, he's taking that. He's not going to pick health. This is the game where it's like, he if we make it super late game, we're going to... This is this remnant damage is going to be insane with Fatal Bonds yeah. as well. Because you're playing versus these, like, not... I wouldn't say, like, exactly two melee cores, but kind of two melee cores, right? Your Wraith King as well as your TA, they walk in. You're going to get hit by remnants, especially, of course, when you get the 25 auto ball talent. But now, yep, look, LGD, they back back up to farm, and they have Rock back up. They're ready. They're always going to be ready to fight. They're staying pretty healthy, too, and four of them are staying in the same area. Yeah. Forward trying they're, to get themselves them themselves some farm here, too, but... They, they just, you know, forwards, they made a few of these mistakes that, you know, sort of, well, not, you know, plays that may work against, say, sort of other teams, but against LGD, those sort of plays, you're not going to get away with them. Yeah. And they, they, they have to step it up if they want a chance here in this series because, you know, this is, this is PSG LGD. This is... A very scary team, and you know you cannot play like it's a pop. CCNC cannot go for those sort of risky plays. He's got to keep his cool. Yeah, it's like the the, the like the big risk plays are the ones that really hurt them yeah. so far. Like that bottom fight where they go for this five man defense, even though the, that tower is looking very difficult to defend when the warlock has ulti, and then yeah, that mid jump that they go for there, that's another tower for LGD. Yeah, playing very composed as they take objective after objective. Looks like they're kind of waiting for maybe Bloodstone a little bit before they do want to straight up take a fight. But he's looking, he can still fight. He's full mana anyway. And he has a DD rune now too. Because it very much, the here. fact that it's, it, it's just 4k and both Yuwa and CCC have very good farm, it's very much, you know, they're, they're playing it smart with the, with the farm game in, in mind, right? It's like, we, okay, we know you can farm boys, but can you fight LGD? That's yeah. going to be the real test. Because they're hitting all the, they've got great farming patterns, CCC. We'll be able to TP out before Snowball's anywhere near. But when it comes to the actual fighting, will they stand a chance? It's always just the same thing. It's just, do you have Warlock? No. You probably can't win the team fight unless the Warlock's dead or doesn't have Chaotic Offering. That hero just, yeah, we know what he provides. So they have to be able to get to that back line. So Vision is going to be really important. They do have that aspect, right? They have the TA traps constantly. I've been seeing Xnova placing sentries absolutely everywhere in, in like the lanes all over the place just to make sure that he's not... They're not keeping tabs of him because if they can get the jump on the back lines, if they can try to get maybe even Chalice or X Nova, that could turn that could turn things. But their positioning so far has been very good. They haven't been covered by wards or anything like that. Now, see, since he has a BKB, so his life is a little bit easier. He doesn't have to worry about those disables and just getting quickly blown up. But you can see LGD, they're poised, they're ready to fight. Bloodstone on maybe. Got this blink. They've got pretty much everything at their arsenal right now, and this incredibly farmed Juggernaut. An eagle song he's about what a thousand gold away from having. Well, I guess about no eighteen hundred gold away from having. No, no less than that. About he's fifteen, fifteen hundred like gold. He's like he's like nine hundred gold away from having the butterfly. Nine hundred gold, yeah. Yeah, he's very close to having B fly. The Wraith King's still keeping up though, right? For uh, Yawar is still very far, yeah. but look, he's found a bloodstone charge. Maybe Oof. able to zip in and get that kill. It's a solo kill too, so he gets a lot of extra bonus golden experience. He went from sixteen and a half all the way almost up to level eighteen from that kill. See him mid as well. They've got the lead in onto MSS. Uh oh. And forward gaming, hemorrhaging kills. The group up is just too much. They're not able They've to take a lot the of push. fight. This jug with his healing ward army is ready to go towards the high ground. They will TP back on the storm. Maybe he's going to be there to defend the top lane. But they could push and with the back of a chalice's Omni Knight. I mean, he could just stand here and hit towers. Yeah, you can just get Heavenly Grace, solo crested, and he just chills up on that high ground. Disables don't matter. 
They even see maybe right now farming up top, but they don't have their bat rod and their Grimstroke. They don't have their combo. So you see LGD, they're still positioning themselves a little bit aggressive. Now when the heroes are respawning, they know they can back back up. But yeah, they still have everything available. They got those two kills without having to commit any real cooldowns. So still always going to be ready to fight. And as we see, X Nova just constantly more and more sentries being placed down to look for those pesky traps. It's just looking harder and harder for Ford. They, you know, they, they have got this combo. They've got to try and find an avenue to get it off. They have the blinks. They have everything built towards, you know, they have, you know, disabling two heroes at the start of the fight. If they don't get the Soulbind combo off, then the fight feels pretty much impossible against a five-man of LGD. Absolutely. And they're even now just pre-using pre Heavenly Grace on maybe. So if they do ever get that lasso on him, it's going to be just, it's going to be reduced so heavily. Look at that. He's solo crested and Heavenly Grace. He's just going to jump in, try to get some information. A full Agonims. Oh. Oh my. So now he doesn't matter where he is. Exactly. Maybe he can literally go wherever he wants. And yep. he knows there's going to be backup. They do jump in. The other last one to one. The Salt Blind's down, but there's the GA yeah, out. As no one damage. of the killing off, he drops. CCC pops the BKB. See if they can go for this, but already the Omni Slash has killed off your wild ones. Good bounces as well over towards CCC. He has to back away. The BKB is worn off. Army pops the Mantry still continues to chase down CCC. CCC trying to desperately get back towards the Shrine. Will be able to do so. See if they can chase him down and go for more. Army's coming with the Blade. Fury has Chalice by his side. The healing ward is out. Pilot Eye trying to kill off the healing ward. Will get it, but it costs him his life. Pilot Eye dead. CCC jumping over to the side, trying to get on top of Chalice. Chalice is being focused. Sicky Napalm stacking up the get Chalice. Chalice. Chalice is dead, but maybe. Big zip across. CCC is dead. Double buyback for CCC. And the Elder Time to get back into this one as they'll look to try and turn things around. And they have got the Warlock. CCC still finding fit. The Red Fire Blast is out onto Army. He has the Blade Fury, but forward. They're chasing him down. Can he get away? Maybe he has to zip out of here. Army's been left behind. Ame dies as well. Forward gaming. They'll take the team fight. Did have to utilize a couple of buybacks, but they get a big team fight win. How many was that? It was a couple. Pi and CC and C. It was just two, right? You are, I think, had two they're gonna reincarnates. Get and they're going to well. get Roche out of it. They're yeah. going to get Roche out of it, unless maybe, but eyes on maybe here. He is definitely the man who would go for a zip steal. They also almost got the gem. That's why you saw maybe zip backwards. He went to pick up the gem that X Nova had dropped, but yeah, huge buybacks coming out for it's, forward there. That was. A great way they get the kite the way that they disengaged and Pi actually getting the uh he got the stomp he got the stomp on both the storm spirit as well as i believe it was the warlock or the tusk i couldn't actually see which one it was on the right side there but yeah he got the stomp off and then it was just ame ame got he got completely segregated going for that dive onto the shrine there so the buybacks were able to come through they still have a 5k gold lead but i mean forward getting that aegis is the aegis, swing of momentum. i mean it's, yeah under no circumstance you know, can forward allow maybe to get an aegis so you know they've them getting it is it's absolutely huge against this lineup. Yep. This I mean Guardian Angel is actually absurd now with Aghanims. Back to how it used to be where it gives HP regen. It heals so much. It's doing 360 in the fight too. So not only do it take no physical damage from the Wraith King TA cores, but the limited magical damage that's kind of coming out from forward gets negated because of that extra regen that comes out too. And it doesn't matter where he is, right? It hits everything. Uh, pushes, the, pushes the lanes too. That's the greatest thing about the Ag Zomni too. You just click and it's, it's also pushing lanes out while you're also taking a team fight. Now GD, unlikely to to maybe sort of force fights like that again. It was a a very aggressive play. You know, going up towards the shrine and did result in, as you mentioned, the army being separated, getting a little too stuck in. In an area where there's always going to be the potential for those buyback TP to Shrine plays to come in from forward. Yeah, I think the one where Chalice also got chased, I believe MSS hit a five-man stroke of fate. So it was like all five of them got hit by a pretty large nuke and that slow that comes through uh, from it. Because they were all lined up like perfectly for it. So yeah, just those, those, little, those little clustered areas can be a little bit difficult, of course, after you pop your, after you pop your chaotic offering if the other team does have their spells available. As LGD, they're still ready to fight, though. They've got offering again available, so... Constantly looking to go for those fights anyway, even if they're into an Aegis. Oh, mate. We'll show in the top lane. For gaming, yeah, we'll see how keen they are themselves to make a play with that three minutes of Aegis time that they have. Mm -hmm. Of course, that MKB being picked up for CCNC next, going, you know, for the butterfly that is out on the Juggernaut. We see Yuara has queued up a Nullifier. I'm looking. I'm trying to think why he went the nullifier in particular here. Oh, for the dispel? Oh. But I'm trying to think what he's trying to dispel here. The omni buffs? You can't. None of them. Even the grace. 
I mean, you can dispel Guardian Angel. I guess that's the one. Yeah, okay, Guardian Angel is the one. That's probably the best yeah, one. Yeah. But like Grace and everything just that makes it stays. so hard because that yeah. even like reduces the duration of everything. Of the, of the, action, of the, of the nullifier yeah, and everything right, yeah. too. So. Of course. Uh, Still a good item, right? It's a high amount of damage too, so your critical strikes do come out har harder. And it's always, I mean, Nullifier is always going to be a good item too, just to counteract some items that come out from these heroes, like the Ghost Scepter from the Tusk and even like the Manta style from the, the Jug in particular, so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If they get to the Nullifier down with the Phantom Embrace, the Jug could yeah, be... Yeah, like... He could be caught out, tripped Could up. be, right? Like, there's possibility. It's still, yeah, it's still hard, of course, yeah, with the saves that... Yeah, not only Chalice, but of course FY with these Snowballs. Yeah. He's always going to be there if he sees a teammate. In difficulty. I was wondering which one it was going to be. If it was going to, I guess, like the, the other one I was thinking was the Abyssal, just because they have the Grim Stroke, right? Because then now they have double Nullifier. So that's the difference. It's double Nullifier. It could be the double actual uh, case where if it does come out. They haven't really been able to get too many of the combos out this time around, but. Oh, there it goes. MKB done for CCNC. Got a minute and a half left on and the Aegis. Not too here. long. Too long to, to try and make a play with it. They're smoking bottom, and CCNC is top. Okay, he's going to port away before they even try to, before they even find anybody here. Uh, snaking. Ooh. I found a big one. Getting the Warlock out of the fight, Ooh. that's the dream. Your war gets the instant blink stun. And there that is Ex Nova gone. I mean, 50 seconds where LGD will not be keen to fight. He is a crucial part of the team fight. Yeah. Now on LGD, I think you just don't fight into the Aegis for a moment. Wait until your Warlock comes back up and then probably look to take the fight anyway after that Aegis does despawn because it's pretty much going to be the same time as your Warlock comes up. But yeah, nice pick by forward there. Keeping it close. Experience only 4,000, same thing with that gold. I mean, and that, that sort of situation will happen a lot if x is not super careful. The amount mm -hmm. of blink, you know, f instant physical burst damage, whether it be the the TA or the this the, the Wraith King, you know, you, you he's going to be dead in a couple of hits. Yeah. And there's very little chance for anyone to react on PSGLGD and save him. You can see them starting to get more aggressive here as Warlock is starting to respawn forward, giving the respect, backing up. We have Snake King, of course, going for the Agonims, making sure that between that and the Soul Binds, they have all the lassos in the fights. Yeah, you can grab the majority of the team yeah. if you do actually get lucky. And then is the Aegis gone. So mm -hmm. We'll over back up. You can certainly tell that LGD want to do something now. Yeah, they do have a smoke available too on X Nova, so he could look to maybe go for some D wards. They still do have their gem, I believe, on maybe, so... Got the TD rune down bottom as well. Oh, yeah, and he gives the bottle up over to Ame. Yeah, he's still got a slot to hold it. Doesn't need that one right now. Xnova is getting close to level 18. Looks like he even went to go farm a camp before he wants to go and take a fight here. And yeah, he's even pinging the top lane too. He's like, I want to farm my level 18 as this Warlock. Get that much stronger chaotic offering that does come out. I mean, he's got to be a little careful though, especially yeah, with your wire around. Yeah, he got With that nullifier. They're gonna, they're, I think they're going to group up and just smoke. He, it's... It's not really like it changes that much if he does have it. They're incredibly strong anyway. He, he did want it though. He pinged it a couple of times and he might have It would have been the, sort of yeah. the perfect situation, but as you say, it's, it's not he's still going to be very potent. The combo, the scan's there. They know forwards on the high ground. Going to go for the wrap with the bounty rune spawning in 10 seconds. See if they can get CCNC before he's able to pot the BKB. That's the question. In they go with the wall. Touch prize there. They zip through. The man is again on top of him. He doesn't get any chance to pot the BKB. They've got to just run. They're going for more here. Maybe using the majority of his mana to get on top of Pilot Eye. Elder Tyne, he's gone. They have to get out the rest of them. They cannot afford to lose anything else, and they won't. Ford will get the rest of them out of there. They do have that top wave pushed all the way in, in fact, towards the Tier 3 tower, so LGD will have to react to that. But a bit of a scary time now. CC and C, after the MKB purchase, did not have money for the buyback. And he bought back in the last fight, too, so it's that Or is it still on cooldown, yeah, I mean, actually? It's, well, it's just the oh, extra just the duration. Yeah. He has that super long duration still. Yeah, you're right now. Buyback is still on cooldown, though, for 40 seconds as well. Oh, it is still? But, okay. Yeah, he still has... Does he, has, does he have the money? Oh, he, he does, does have, have the money. money he does. For it if, it, if he does need him 40 seconds. Okay. Mm -hmm. but that's painful. Like, if they have that vision, you see exactly how FY plays it, right? Just blink, you have the auto-cast on your punch, so it does it, like, immediately as soon as you get on top of him yeah. if you have that auto-attack after spells. More than time in the air and then to, you get the to allow wall. maybe to get him with a vortex yeah. before, before he lands and can press BKB. Yep. And you saw just like the, I mean, forward, there's no way you can fight without your TA, so the immediate disengage. If forward gets, I feel like if forward ever gets initiated on, it's like, it's just chaos. Yeah, Shiva's guard done on maybe as well now, so. He doesn't have to worry too much about dying that quickly if he does get disabled. He's got just so much protection. 25 armor, he can get yeah. solo crested up to even get it, push him up to that 30, 37 armor too. And here they go, they're just gonna push it up. Solo crest on Jug, extra attack speed. Grace him up as well. Zip forward. She was not quite able to catch Hawa. 
There's 20 seconds before CCNC is back in the game. We'll see how much they can push out of this. You what? Stuns out. Heavenly Grace is there. They're going to look to lead in straight away. In fact, onto the Wraith King. Omni Slash as well. You are. He's dying. He's gone. I'll kill him off the once. See if they can do it a second time. Jump in. They do get the last off, but there's the chaotic offering. Drop down by X Nova onto the two of them. GA's out as well. Keeps may be safe. He's able to zip out of there. And you are. He's going to die again. 90 seconds without the Wraith King. He himself, he is short on the money. 200 gold. Short of buyback as they have no Wraith King for 80 seconds. The mid bracks exposed. PSG LGD will be able to clean these up. See if they want to go for anything else. They do. The pings are out onto the bottom lane. They're going to keep moving. And this is a painful minute for Forward Gaming to be without their Wraith King. 30 gold short. It is ticking down, so soon he will have they got gold. A tower. He's got it. Okay, the tower made all the difference. Now he can buy back in. They'll look towards maybe. Maybe he's got him with the zip. He's been silenced. Jump in. They're on top of him. Maybe he's still alive, he's though. Still alive. Zip. He's got enough mana to get out of there. FY's ready to go back in. Goes in with a snowball on towards Snake King. CC is he trying to chase down maybe, but the Shadow Word heals there. Oh X over the upheaval, slowing them down, keeping them away from the storm. Maybe he's able to TP out of there. They will lose FY. See if everyone else can get out, and it looks like they can, so only FY lost for that. Everybody else in PSG LGD escapes. They get that full set of racks mid, they get the tier 3 down bottom, and they are able to force out a Wraith King buyback. That was so close to them getting maybe just a little bit of extra heals that comes through, just because of farm there. He pops the Bloodstone as well from earlier too, and he's actually able to get away from all that. That would have been a pretty significant kill if they can actually get maybe their chunk to move, remove at least a couple of these charges but weren't able to find it as they're trying to get on the aggression here too. They oh. know that the golem is down. CCNC. They know Tusk is dead. Trying for the cheeky mail play. Gotta be careful. Who's got the gem on the side of LGD now? Or was it actually picked up? Jump in towards Arme, but very hard to do. They're gonna go with the lasso on Chalice. The Soulbind is there onto the two of them. They, they have the second to be able to Chalice, the Nullify is down as well. Onto the Jug, and with Chalice gone, there's no save for Arme. Oh Arme's dead as well. The jump successful, forward. Getting two big core pickoffs, and look who's back in the game. Roshan ready for the taking. They'll move into the pit. They'll get this Rosh, they'll get this Aegis and Cheese, and there's nothing that LGD can do unless we see maybe go for a big zip play, but maybe as it is at the moment, it's just pushing out that bottom lane, but forward gaming. What a pick-off to get in that middle lane. Ame and Chalice, they were not ready for that. No, Ame was definitely not ready for like the Nullifier and the stun coming out. It just comes out and catches him before he can do anything. His Lincoln's got broken as well, so didn't end up blocking anything. And yeah, they get themselves that Roche. That's, I mean, that's huge. Lord able to still find things here. And a and full Hex MSS, now finished up. Yes, indeed. This is the scary one. So much follow-up for the Soulbinds already before that item was picked up. But, uh, you know, it's sort of this point, the, the Lincolns, it, it, it doesn't really matter. There's so much point target lockdown that something's going to catch you out. That's the point where, you know, a BKB could arguably be more useful. As they have many ways to get the catch off. Lincolns are just so good, even when, even versus all of this, because you're just versus Batrider. It's just that instant sure. thing that we talk about, right? Just you hiccup it a second if they have to break it, and then they get the last. So it buys the time for you to get your but spells it, off. Is it enough? I mean, I guess you're just relying on Chalice to keep perfect position. FY. It's going to lead in on to Pilot Eye on the side as well. Storm, maybe trying for MSS, but MSS. To regen. He's fine. He's out of there. The counting offering is going to be dropped down, but it's only on to Pilot Eye. So if they could just get out of here. They'll be fine with that. Maybe picked up a regen. It just spawned when he was zipping out. He's so he's going to be getting full mana. They're going to continue this chase. Does bait out the BKB on Snake King. Forward still on the retreat. MSS does get trapped up by the shards. Dust there as well. They spot out the second support. They'll get the two supports. Let's see if they can get the cores. Chalice leading in. Big zip once more from maybe. CCNC easy blink. That is one of the most ridiculous rune spawns I've seen. He was literally like mid zip as it spawned and he grabbed it. And it's just a regen. So he's able to make these incredible jump forwards. And him having the gem is really important oh, for CCC. his team. He came out of the mail. He's trying to make the fire happen. He's been Vortex back though. They've got the damage. He's been disarmed. He's dead. They've lost the ages. As now you are, zip past by maybe, tries to go for the silence on the pilot eye. CCC gets the BKB off. He's getting bashed up. Will manage to get the blink out with the refraction. He's out of there. He's back to safety around the rest of his teammates. Pilot Eye's brought back for this one. Can they hold on to the racks? I don't think they can. PSG LGD's got the push. They'll take a second set of racks away from forward. They're just continuing their way toward top, too. They're still feeling pretty strong here. They've got their GA and... Okay, they're, they're now giving a little bit more respect. The catapults are coming in. There's also... They don't know this, but there's an arcane rune top. That could be pretty huge for maybe. Wow. One does get the stun out to X Nova. Snaking's trying to hunt. See if they can go for anything. They jump CCNC. Yeah, maybe straight back in. CCNC is in trouble. He's instant disabled. He's dead. 
Buy back immediately. Palada and the new focus. Maybe who does he want to go for now? The soul point to the two. Zone. They've got the two of them and they've got the damage. CCC has burst down maybe with the physical right clicks. Chalice in trouble as well. He gets the G8 out though. The stomp onto the two of them. The sleep is perfect. The Phantom embraces there onto Chalice, but CCC's got to be careful. Here comes maybe. The focus maybe back in. The buyback from the storm. Maybe turning things back around. He's done with this game. He's shutting it down. GG is called. As PSG AG, LGD will take game one. It looked like they were about to kick back a bit there, Forward Gaming, but with that buyback, maybe just finish the game. He knew that Forward Gaming had used all of their buybacks.